Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of The Outer Worlds Murder on Eddie Danos. I'm Colonel RPG as usual and I'm very happy to have you here with me in Rizzo's Hotel. I'm actually not sure if this is Rizzo's Hotel, I believe it is, but it's it's like rented out. Bellhop, what are you? I didn't notice you were here. The crime scene's awaiting, Inspector. Can't believe something like this could happen in my hotel. When I found her, I was just hoping she had a little too much to drink, but all the grievous bodily injury adds up, I suppose. She was lying in a pool of blood, and your first thought uh, is, I wonder if she's drunk? Hey, Byzantines and restraint aren't two words that often go together. Wouldn't be the first blood-soaked, unconscious party goer I've come across. Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions. I do. You want to give me uh, more details on how you came across the body? Sure. I'd taken to checking the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. You understand? Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Tell ya. Thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey, now I can finally see smells. Mm-hmm. Did you... <laughs> that's, that's a little bit of a... <laughs> I was going to say that. It, I might say that. Um, any idea why Helen would have been in the ballroom after hours? Beats all hell out of me. Maybe she was uh, practicing for the unveiling? Did you kill Helen? You can tell me if you did. It'll be our secret. What? No! Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. I was in shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. Okay, back to my other questions. Sure. What's on your mind? I didn't notice that he said before that now nine out of his ten favorite series are ruined. And I found that little detail a little bit too suspicious. But otherwise, I think his story is not particularly suspicious at the moment. Did you see Ellen on the day of her death? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. No. Oh, wait. Uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. You, you did. You did see. You're lying. I think we both know that you're uh, itching to gossip. Honestly, you're more than a little right. <laughs> I've been burning at the bridges to share my theories. Day of her death, I saw Helen leave the hotel premises of the profit of profitability. And didn't see her come back. A little on the suspicious side, I think. Seemed especially strange seeing how, as far as I was aware, the two didn't get on. Yeah, what's the deal with the profit of profitability? Is she a guest? Uh, yep. Gives seminars on increasing profit margins and the like. Can't say much else, seeing how I ain't in the gossip market. Why didn't Ellen and the Prophet get along? As far as I can recall, Helen dismissed the lady's seminars in some kind of interview. Said her co-star used them, but she didn't. The top rungers are always ready to read between the lines of famous folks and seem to think the Prophet was on her way out. Woman lost a ton of bits and is set to lose more. Okay. I hope all that helped. I'd like to be as useful as I can in the investigation. I just didn't want to steer anyone the wrong way. Right. Got any, again, got any idea who might have wanted to do Ellen in? The other way around. The H's confuse me. Helen in. That's how it goes. Everyone's got theories. I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye. So, this is sealed, and it's also... I, I need to talk to everybody around here. Oh, that's really cool for a crime scene. It also makes sense that it would be like that because we have seen these things. Black hole birdies disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be inconsolable. Yeah, we've seen this before in the game, just not very often. It's not very common that um, uh, that we deal with with uh, like private 
areas like this. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. Look at these people, gawking over Helen's corpse. Bunch of parasites. Well, it's not quite parasites in the sense that they're not really benefiting off of her. But yeah, I know I need to talk to you. Excuse me. Let me. Excuse me. That's not how I talk to people. F and E, you know how it goes. My last quarterly review said I had an attitude problem. Morale improvement program fixed me right up. Okay, so you're not the one I need to talk to. Also, I can do this? No. I can murder people. I'll, I'll figure it out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Idle camera unavailable, it said over there. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. I didn't save, though. Did I save? Because I, I wasn't feeling the itch to save. No, I did. I did. I knew I should have gotten no, don't worry. I... What I want to do is I want to do this. There it is. One. And on the left side of the screen, you can see monthly medical allotment maxed out. And then over here, has a lifetime subscription to Dissident Hunter. They are just normal Rezo security. We've seen these before, I think. The dead? Oh gosh, is that Miss Helen? Can we see? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I think I can. Constable, Doctor Goodnight. We have not met. Oh, thank the law, Inspector. You don't know how relieved I am to see you. Constable Keen, nice to meet you. We spoke over the ether wave. Constable Maria Keen, it's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight, ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. What, what have you got for me, Doctor? An extraordinary contraption. You'll love it. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Uh, what does this thing do exactly? I'm so glad you asked. Allow me to explain. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. And that's thematically appropriate because of the... Also, exactly what I was thinking of, what the OSI, I don't actually remember what OSI stands for, but it's Max's religion. It's the whole deterministic thing because they haven't heard about quantum things. But, um... Although, I suppose on a larger scale, it's it. I rambled about it in in my first uh, in the let's play of the game, so it sounds like something the OSI teaches. Oh goodness, no! I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. It's a weapon, though. Well, it's a weapon. I might not need weapons, though, in this DLC or something. So, we have a discrepancy amplifier. It's a pistol. So, what do I not like? I don't like the shotgun. Also, the shotgun... Do I not like the shotgun? Because I leveled these up to as high as I could. And, uh, yeah. So this discrepancy amplifier is designed by Dr. Goodnight and is an inductive reasoning simulator and communication device fine-tuned to pick up discrepancies in the Eridanus atmospheric complex. The device requires the strong magnetic fields of the Eridanus complex and cannot function anywhere else in the colony because it's scripted specifically for this DLC. And why would you even expect... Oh. It's got ammo as well. Oh, this is... Mm-hmm. Oh, the jiggles. Oh, it jiggles. Also, wait, what? What's the... Do you see the... Okay, it's just an animation. Okay, Felix. You you are quite discrepant. Let's uh, let's see what I can do here. So, uh, right-click? Um... Okay. Oh, the analyze is in this mode, specifically. 
Rizu, let's let, let me just look around a little bit because I want to see what this is all about. Because this is where. Wait, is this where the body was found? Fifty credits. There's a broken bottle of potentially Rizos. We're gonna find more, I'm sure. Let me just step all over the crime scene. You know how it goes. It is Rizzo Spectrum Brown, although that looks a little bit bigger than the one in uh there it is. There's a lot of, there's more of them. That one is different. <laughs> that one is not one that we pick up. Oh, because wait, you're What the hell? This weapon is like a puppy. Is it because I'm No, it's not because I'm not aiming at close things. It's just this does something. Rizzo Spectrum. If it's brown, drink it down. I that is one way of looking at it. Um, okay. Felix, don't don't mess with things. We got Rizzo's bite. Now that's the thing that we got last episode, the purple berry thing. We got shots and uh, all the things, okay. And an exit. Actually this is a little bit suspicion. Uh, suspicious to Eridanos. That could be an exit strategy for um, for whoever killed her. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Thank you. That is what you do. Timeline discrepancy detected. <laughs> also, beep beep beep. You, how dare you? How dare you, beep 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 beep. <laughs> okay, so we uh, we can't do anything from here. Hold. Yeah, that's. I don't. I don't do that. This is how we, we analyze it. And also, uh, what I want to see is I want to see if I can... So the discrepancies have these waves to them. Oh! There's footprints. The discrepancy amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized arsonist. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of begin amplification. Smack it around a little. Uh, I see you've been designed with a modular analytical uh, analytical system. What else can you do? The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. Let's get started. Tell me about this discrepancy you found. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. The line didn't didn't put it like that, but the voice actor just went, "Yep, I heard assailant or assailants," but in that <laughs> mode, I can taste the dirt. Hmm, let's not do that. The, at least not right now. Discrepancy amplifier. Do the size of these footprints match anything you have on record? Footprint is a tailor made, eight point seven five, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. My perception is not good enough for things. Amplifier, can you analyze the dirt? The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonio. So Ellen must have been at the orchards before she died. Unless, of course, these are not... Allen's. And, like, they look pretty work booty kind of boots. But maybe I can't draw conclusions from that? This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. And we have a level up. I believe we get a perk as well from that. I don't know. So we can increase our th everything above 
if I remember correct. Wait, can we? Yeah, we can increase our things above 100 now. Our maximum is 150. Didn't I... Didn't I have things that increased my, my capabilities for, for these? Uh, I think so. Why did my perception specifically lack? Perception is a stat. Uh, or it's the... It's just in the summary thing, I think. I might be wrong about that. So we got a log peak, but I think we can max. We can get the 150 with, uh, like, clothes and whatnot. Unless I have sold them, which is perfectly possible. Our persuade right now is completely done. Uh, let's see. Chance to cover to cower resets after 10 seconds. Yeah, those the, 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 the kind of incredible that the maximum level persuade skill is a combat thing. And that means that you don't want to have maximum level because it's a combat thing. And uh, I don't, it's fine. So we have uh, engineering over here. We're potentially going to need hacking. I don't remember. Hack turned off. Hack turned off auto mechanicals to scramble them. Oh, right. Right. I understand what that means. So I think I'm going to go with the hacking. It is a big investment, but it is an investment. And we're going to go with it. And we're going to accept that. And then in terms of perks, I don't... Wait, why do you have skills? Why is it showing me that? It shouldn't show me that. Do I have other skills that I can invest in? I do. How? Oh, because I... This game is not like Wasteland, Wasteland 3. This one has an apply button. Uh, which uh, Wasteland 3 doesn't, and it upsets me greatly in that game. So, uh, damage to consequent... Yeah, I had some things over here that I kind of might want. Let's see, movement speed during TTD for 5 seconds. Extra damage... Oh, whenever you're affected by a, an harmful effect. Extra 20% damage, that's nothing. I don't care for that. If it were extra 200%, then maybe I would. But then I wouldn't want to be affected by harmful effects. Let's see. Improvisation Warrior. 300 improvised weapon damage. <laughs> now, that's what that's what I'm talking about. But unfortunately, I have no idea what an improvised weapon is. So, yeah. 30% uh, damage while under 25% health. Area of effect damage received is decreased. Melee damage returned as health detection radius of enemies. I'll, I'll actually go with that. It's not that I want to be too specific, but yeah. Okay, I could see those boots being hers. At least they're boots. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired. But all she managed was a sticky B. Was she trying to spell the name of our killer? This hypothesis is plausible, but requires additional information. A B. Could stand for anything, like Spectrum Brown. Now calculating likelihood of Halcyon Helen using her final moments to endorse Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. Low to moderate likelihood. <laughs> of course. Isn't a uh, black hole birdie staying here? I was wondering about that. Before we arrived, I heard something on the aether waves about black hole birdie taken up at the Grand Colonial. Correct. Bertie Black Hole Holcomb is a registered guest at the Grand Colonial Hotel. Anybody else I should know about? Accessing guest database B. The Grand Colonial Hotel is proud to serve the following VIPs. Bertie, comma, black hole. Burbage 3001. Also butler. Could be the butler. Um, make a note of this for later, amplifier. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved compliment. Splendid work, Inspector. Don't patronize me. Oh, we can't see the bee. I was gonna say this must be like chocolate, chocolate uh, whiskey or something, which uh, I am particularly a fan of. Uh, wait, what? Not chocolate whiskey, I mean, uh, cocktails, what I mean, but, uh, um, what I mean to say is, I thought it was, like, really thick, but it isn't really thick. It's just, we can only see it with this thing, which is fair enough. Oh, look at that! It, the, the thing disappeared. Oh, that means the puppy ears of the weapon, they only show up 
They only show up when there's things around. Okay, we can... Oh, this is really good. Okay, so we're going to walk walk around with this out. That's, that's perfectly acceptable. Doctor? The purple berry orchards. And a footprint. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. Uh, yeah, I'd like a word with you. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. So tell me about the body. What's the cause of death? My apologies, Inspector. I've not yet finished my autopsy. Come back later? Sounds good. I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. I was going to say, it's got plenty of corpses now that I killed half of its leaders. Uh, but that's in the main storyline. Uh, well, also my decisions, it's not, you know, mandatory that you do that. It sounds like you enjoy being a coroner. Absolutely. Usually I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique or as quiet as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords, shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring, or working on my automatic sprat peeler. That's... Mm. Speaking of inventions, I'm curious about this discrepancy amplifier. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. What made you invent the amplifier? Hmm. I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. It's a need. Just as sprats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other. I feel the need to create. Come on. There has to be more to it than that. Ah, uh, Inspector, I'm sure you don't want to spend four hours talking back and forth about the intricacies of a science project. It works. That's the important part. That's uh, as far <laughs> that's as far as uh, as far away as <laughs> I, that's on purpose also, but uh, written on purpose like that. But it's as far away from science as as it gets. It's the it's the <laughs> focusing on the on the fact that it works, um, especially because in science when it doesn't work, that's the interesting bits. The amplifier seems pretty powerful. Why are you trusting me with it? Because you're the inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. Yeah, but why not just use it yourself? I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. And you want to be known as the inventor who helped Helen's murder. You don't miss a thing, do you, inspector? I can see why the constable recommended hiring you. Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. Hmm. What happens if I break it? Or lose it or something? I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say, and I don't have an indefinite supply. Okay. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. Yeah, uh, about... Can I ask about the discrepancy amplifier again? Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Nah. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh. Yeah. Space is how you skip the dialogue. Okay, we'll talk later. Parvati? Hey. Something I should know? Yeah, I'd like to ask some questions. Are you asking me these questions in an official capacity? Uh... Yep, got my inspector hat on. I understand you're being metaphorical, but I'm contractually obligated to remind you that Rizzo's cannot provide you with any official brand-associated headgear. Please, ask your questions. Who found the body? Norval, head bellhop. He was understandably distraught. I believe his feelings were genuine. He's a remarkably poor actor. Hotel security corroborates his whereabouts during the murder. I haven't included him in my list of suspects, but 
neither am I convinced of his innocence. Yeah, <laughs> more or less there. It's kind of, it's, it's really good that she mentions this. He's a remarkable, remarkably poor actor. Because he is. But also that sets a standard for the game. Because it isn't just that the game is being, you know, a little bit helpful to us by making him be so blatant when he lies. It's that he is one of the people who we can tell from the voice acting when they're lying. And that means that it's not going to be as simple as just paying attention to the inflection of their voice and all that. What makes you say that, though? I'm a little suspicious of anyone who enjoys his job as much as Norval. He's also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. Obsessive passion can lead to irrational behavior. It's a fact of modern science. I'm actually not sure that he is obsessive. He is also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. She either doesn't understand how he sees her work, or she's talking about a specific type of appreciation. You know, like, in the, the, that he likes her older stuff rather than the newer stuff. And he is obsessive regarding her older stuff, and maybe even regarding her persona, but not necessarily her work. Either way, the point is, maybe that's not quite as true as she thinks. Or is making it out to be. Is she trying to put... Are you trying to push the blame on the butler right now? It's not the butler, it's a bellhop. Actually, that starts with a B as well. <laughs> I'm still... I'm, I think the butler did it. it. I mean, it has to be the butler. Come on. Any, either way, um, anyone witnesses the... Uh, any witnesses to the murder? If there were any witnesses, none came forward. Ballroom cameras were also offline at the time of the murder. Oh. Helen was very particular about having cameras on her security footage would have constituted documentary filmmaking can't afford that so no witnesses what about the murder weapon there's no sign of the murder weapon whatever it was that killed helen the killer took it with them frankly i'm having trouble imagining exactly what it was that killed her yeah uh, any signs of a struggle was helen armed Helen was known to carry her signature weapon, a bespoke handgun known as the Needler. There was no sign of any such weapon on her body. The Needler's real? I watched her use that thing in the gunfight at the end of Terror on Monarch. You keep excitable company. I hope they won't complicate your investigation by touching things. I hope they will. Do you have any suspects? Spencer Woolrich and Bertie Holcomb are officially persons of interest in this investigation. I've mostly ruled out Mr. Woolrich, leaving Bertie Holcomb as my lead suspect. Let me rephrase that. He's your lead suspect. I've been instructed to turn this case over to your capable hands, while I continue to serve as a consultant. The question of why you've been instructed specifically to take care of the case in the first place immediately pops to my head. Either way, we have two suspects. That's good. And we also have some perception and intelligence checks over here. You seem a little relieved. And your lead suspects are a star tossball player and an actor. Uh, it's basically, I think... I think this one is the most interesting, the perception one. Uh, but the first and the third one seem to be about the same thing. Yeah, you sound a little relieved. Work is simple. People are complicated. The people involved in this murder are especially complicated. Mr. Woolrich was Halcyon Helen's professional rival. It's possible jealousy drove him to take Helen out of the picture. I apologize for the wordplay. Conversely, Mr. Bertie Holcomb was Helen's paramour. The relationship was reportedly dissolved. I can't rule out her murder as a crime of passion. I'll just I'd just like to point out that there's there's a certain It's not a certain, it's like there's blatant good writing when you know when you have this word or this sentence over here. I apologize for the wordplay. And the reason why it's blatantly good writing, not that the rest isn't blatantly good, but uh, this one is, well, the rest is good, but this is blatantly good. And it's a little bit, it's easy to spot, and that's why it's blatant. The point is, what does this sentence mean? I apologize for the wordplay. It means that she is saying that Mr. Woolrich... Not Woolrich, but it's Woolrich, she, she pronounced it like that. Is trying to, or could have been trying to take Ellen out of the picture. And the picture here is the moving picture. 
which is movies and all that. Um, and so it's a pun. So what the sentence here is uh, here to do is basically, uh, well, this sentence was written born out of the need to to say the expression, the common expression, pardon the pun. But pardon the pun, I'll propose to you, amazing, delicious viewer, pardon the, pardon the pun is a very socially charged expression. Not only because it's a common saying in certain, well, English in general, but specifically in America, um, in American English, um, and uh, I don't think the, the Brits say it as well, but they probably do as well. I mean, culture is very interchangeable. It, the point is, it's not ex specifically exclusive to English, but it's specifically ex uh, exclusive to a culture that sees puns as a little bit embarrassing every once in a while, even though it still loves them. So it's capable enough to make them in the first place for sure, but also to spot them easily, because she did. And she might have... She probably meant it as well. The point is, my... And this is why it's a good writing on this particular sentence that I'm focusing on for no particular... Well, for actually, there's a particular reason because I like it. But anyway, specifically the sentence I'm focusing on. The good writing bit is that they didn't write pardon the pun because that would be blatant. That would be too off-put... Not off-putting, but, you know, because it's so typical of our own real-world society. So what she does is she expresses the same feeling and says it in a different way. I apologize for the wordplay, which is like, let's just get synonyms for all the pardon the pun bits, except the, so it's just pardon and pun that uh, get synonyms so that it, it is the same sentence, just said differently. And that's how you write science fiction, because if this is science fiction and the, the people shouldn't say the same things, it's like saying get the hell out of Dodge in a, in a uh, in this setting, which uh, would imply that uh, the movie, what's the movie actually? Huh, I don't know the name of the movie. There's a movie from the 60s where somebody says, you need to get the hell out of Dodge, where, you know, the cops of Dodge are after them or something, and they're going get to get the hell out of Dodge. And that's where the expression comes from. But it's also a normal expression that people say without actually knowing the origin. And it's totally fair to say it like that, because it's a colloquialism. But either way, the point is, science fiction is written in different ways, and this is brilliant, and I love it. You don't seem too uh, sure about Spence, uh, Spencer Woolrich, though. Woolrich thinks of himself as a serious and distinguished actor. He was frequently cast in demeaning roles, while Helen played the charismatic heroine. He has reason to be envious. I considered the possibility that Woolrich killed Helen in order to eliminate a rival and advance his own career. But my reasoning collapsed under closer scrutiny. Woolrich owes his career to Helen's dramas. Her death likely harms his long-term prospects. I'm struggling to determine a motivation for him, so I've largely ruled him out. Hmm. I'm gonna say that that's not a good enough reason. And that would make it the second person that she's ruling out <laughs> and for for not particularly good reasons. Um, or not ruling out specifically, but the second person she's misjudging. I don't think, like, if he is jealous of, jealous of her... Um, it, it doesn't have to be reasonable. It doesn't have to have, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, I know it doesn't make sense, but, you know, people are jealous for things that don't make sense. It's, it's, it doesn't change the fact that they're jealous and can act on it. Uh, what makes you suspect of, uh, suspect Bertie? Mr. Holcomb was in a romantic relationship with Helen. This alone is not enough to make him a lead suspect, but he does play toss ball. Black Hole Birdie currently holds the record for most non-consecutive blows to the head. His tendency toward irrational and violent behavior is well documented. Yeah. That's... I'd like to talk about something else then. Please, ask your questions. No, that's all for now. Anything else? I believe so, but nothing right now. Because we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Kirill RPG, and this has been Outer Worlds Murder on Eddie Danos. I think so. <laughs> I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.